Hello YouTube. After watching the video on lighting basics, this video will focus on how to choose a lighting fixture. The main considerations of a fixture are it must produce enough light or enough power for us to grow our plants. It must have a good spread uh, according to what style of aquascape we want. And lastly, it must have a visually appealing spectrum. After all, aquascaping is visual art. We are not uh, growing plants just for the sake of farming them, but we also want lights that uh, best display the colours of our plants. So for example, if you have red plants, you will want some red spectrum in your light to show off the colours better. After satisfying the main criteria for light, secondary conditions include things such as whether the light fixture is efficient, whether it is programmable, having dawn and dusk functions, and whether or not the light is dimmable. This is especially important for lights that, are, that have very high power values that produce a lot of light because dimming the light fixture is one of the easiest way to deal with algae issues. Instead of dimming, buying fixtures that do not sit on the top of the tank but are instead hung from a bar offers the choice to raise the light to lower the, the lighting levels in the tank. This is also, also a good way to adjust the lighting level in the tank. The next feature I want to talk about is the spread of different light fixtures. For point sources of light such as metal halides or LED spotlights, the spread is circular with the highest area of illumination directly below the center of the fixture. However, the light weakens towards the edges as the distance from the center uh, increases. For single light bar formats, which is commonly used in LEDs, we get the strongest uh, power directly below the fixture's center line and this diminishes according to how far we move from the center line. Arguably, the fixtures that will have the most even kind of spread will be fixtures that use multiple sources of light, so for example an array of T5 tubes or LED arrays. Such fixtures are often unpopular among aquarists because they are more bulky However, they offer the most even form of illumination for a tank. Point sources of lights are best for squarish tanks or tanks that can be ev evenly divided into squares. They can work well where a single light bar may not offer the same coverage and if you get two light bars to cover the square tank, it might be too much light in the overlapping areas. Point sources often have disproportionately higher levels of power right at the center of the fixture and this is good for skips that grow light demanding plants right below the fixture at the center. However, for tank designs that have complex hardscapes, for example stone pillars that block the line of sight from the center, then using a point source uh, may not illuminate the tank well. In this example, the plants behind the stone arc will not be illuminated by a point source that is sitting directly above the center of the tank. Moreover, Having extremely strong light in the center of the tank where the white path is uh, does nothing and in fact it could cause uh, algae to grow there. In a tank design such as this, having a distributed source of light such as a T5 array or perhaps a couple of LED bars will be a better solution. While point sources of light generally have nice and sleek fixtures and give uh, an attractive shimmer in the water when the light penetrates the tank, the general rule is if you have a complex hardscape where there are certain shaded areas that you want uh, better coverage on, it may be better to use a distributed light source instead. A single light bar lies somewhere in between and depending on your scape, it may or may not be sufficient. On tanks that have a lot of depth, uh, one can consider using two light bars of lower power to get better coverage rather than using one extremely high power uh, single light bar. The next question is how much power is it actually necessary to grow a planted tank? This has been covered more in the lighting basics video but as a very short recap, if you look at the ADA galleries example in Niigata, Tom Bar took measurements of the tanks there and at the substrate level most of them have between 30 to 45 power which is a pretty low level of lighting and they can grow all sorts of plants there. With the advancement of lighting technology, Today, it is very easy to find uh, very high power fixtures if you so choose to do so. With the exception of a few particularly light-hungry species, between 60 to 80 power 
well guarantee that you can grow any species you find. Beyond this level of lighting, so for example if you have 100-ish or 200 par, there is very little difference in the quality of growth. What you can get is uh, faster growth. However, with faster growth also comes drawbacks such as your CO2 levels must be on point, your dosing levels must keep up and you need to do regular trimming uh, to keep the plants in check. Failing which, instead of faster growth, you'll get more algae. So using more light allows us to complete projects faster and it allows a scape with a higher amount of self-shading between plants. However, it is much more work to handle compared to a tank with lower lighting that is generally more stable. There are some misconceptions with regard to the higher your lighting, the shorter your internodes. For quite a number of species, this is true. That means the stronger your lighting is, the more compact the plant grows. However, this is not the case for all plants. And for many stem plants, actu actually the reverse is true. For a plant that is starved of light, yes, it well stretched to try to reach light. However, if you have very high lighting level, so much so as it increases the overall growth speed of the plant tremendously, what you will get is uh, actually elongated internodes. Unlike terrestrial plants, whose stem uh, elongation is regulated by this protein called auxin, and this protein is suppressed tremendously by, for example, blue light, and the stronger your blue light is, uh, the more you suppress this protein and you can get extremely uh, weirdly compact plants. But this only works for terrestrial species. The functions in aquatic plants is quite different. You can read the research paper about how ethylene accumulation in the Mary stem actually uh, causes stem elongation. This is because most of our aquatic plants can grow immersed and would rather do so because uh, if they have leaves in the air, they have unlimited access to oxygen and carbon dioxide. So when a plant that is suddenly submerged and its oxygen and carbon dioxide supply is cut off, then its natural reaction is to try to elongate to hit the surface. Providing good oxygen levels and a reasonable amount of carbon dioxide will counter this effect. So one needs to take into account these two factors, and it's not just all about lighting. For many plants, slowing down the growth rate by using cooler water or less light will actually give denser growth than uh, using high temperatures and an excessive amount of light. So highlighting is not the only consideration for getting uh, more compact plants. For some species this is so, for others it's not. And there are other factors to consider as well, such as your oxygen and carbon dioxide levels. Next, highlighting alone doesn't always give uh, better colours. So for example, it doesn't always make red plants redder. Uh, the other factors have to be in place as well, uh, such as your fertilisation as well as good CO2 levels. And of course, uh, if you want to display red plants, you need a light that has a good amount of red in the spectrum to reflect the colours of the plants. For some species, they only turn very red under nitrate limitation. That means if you have a nitrate level in your tank that is below 10 or below 5 ppm or so. In this species, it doesn't matter how much light you use, you need nitrate limitation to bring out the colours. I would say the, the main role of using much higher lighting in a tank than what is necessary is that it allows you to complete scapes more quickly. So for example, if you have a scape with uh, many thick bushes that you need time to trim and shape, using higher lighting does allow you to complete it in a shorter amount of time. In cases where the tank is more dependent on the hardscape for its look, and there are few uh, coloured plants or dense bushes that, that need to be shaped, uh, using as little light as possible actually keeps the rocks clean and nice. I think our aim in growing our tanks is to use as little light as possible to achieve uh, what we want. This gives us a more stable, a more algae free tank. For many Awagumi style tanks, with just a, a monoculture of HC or Glosso as a carpet, I think that using as little light as possible to complete the carpet makes sense, because if you have more light, then it just means more trimming work to keep uh, the look intact. Once you have decided on a certain par level for your tank, then the next question is how do you measure par? Most of the better lights would publish their par levels in their technical specifications sheet. So it will look something like this. This is the technical specifications sheet for the ecozotic light bar. 
and you will see a PAR diagram. The PAR diagram will show you how much PAR does the light produce at different depths of the tank. So for example at 18 inches, uh, this fixture produces uh, 60 PAR. Some other manufacturers will produce a more complex PAR table that includes PAR values at a certain distance from the center line. After deciding on the spread and the PAR levels that you require, the final step is choosing a fixture type. I would say that there are three broad categories, fluorescent lighting, LEDs, or the old school uh, metal halide lamps. Metal halide lamps are point sources. You will see many of these run on the ADA systems. Uh, the whole gallery in Niigata, uh, most of the big tank run on their metal halide systems. These lights run very hot. They produce a nice shimmer in the water. However, I would say that it is difficult to find good visual spectrum for metal halide bulbs. And even for the ADA gallery, most of their metal halide lamps, the Grand Solar for example, it is supplemented by fluorescent lighting to give a better color rendition. The one metal halide bulb that I can recommend highly is the Iwasaki Color Art Bulb. This is because it gives excellent color rendition. These days, if you want a point source light, you can opt for an LED spotlight instead. For example, Castle produces pretty nice LED fixtures. I do find them expensive and also I find them a bit lacking in the, in the red side of the spectrum. The next fixture is probably the most popular format used these days. It is the LED light bar. And today with uh, RGB and white LED mixtures, it allows you to tune the coloration of the light. And the, most of these fixtures are quite compact and sleek. So overall, they are pretty efficient compared to fluorescent or metal halide uh, and the fixtures don't run as hot as well. Due to all these reasons, these, these are among the most popular fixtures we have today. My only complaint would be that for LEDs, even with an RGB plus white fixture, it doesn't cover the entire color spectrum. For example, an RGB plus white fixture would still be lacking in the yellow and cyan portions of the spectrum. However, this is only really noticeable if your tanks has all the colors present. Most tanks don't have uh, orange plants or cyan plants, so it is not noticeable. I use the uh, BML Dutch fixtures myself, and this is the spectrum. However, I find that the orange uh, portion of the spectrum is still lacking. And to display orange plants well, I need to supplement with warm white fluorescent lamp. And uh, I think that amongst the LED fixtures, uh, BML gives very good uh, color rendition. This is because not only does it have RGB plus white LEDs, it has two different kinds of reds and two different kinds of greens that is used and it gives a wider tonal range. I will discuss more on spectrum specifically in another video. However, I have to say that to, to accurately discern uh, whether an a uh, light fixture looks good or not, you really do have to see in real life. Based on videos and photographs, it's not very accurate. Lastly, we will talk about fluorescent fixtures with the most popular uh, bulb being the T5. Surprisingly, uh, this, uh, or maybe not surprisingly, this fixture is largely snubbed by newer aquarists. However, you will find that actually a lot of the competition aquascapers still use this fixture. Even though the fixtures are bulky, they're not as sleek as LEDs, nor as efficient, uh, they come with a very wide selection of colored tubes. The usage of such colored tubes can be used to enhance the colors of our plants in our tank. And all around, the fluorescent technology gives a much broader base spectrum compared to LED. However, with every day that passes and technology improving, this gap is being closed. The colored tubes do make a very big difference in tanks that use a lot of colored plants. If we look at Tomba's 120 gallon setup, initially he started with mostly white tubes and for sure his plants are well grown, but they do not pop nearly as much as when later on he switched out a couple of his white tubes for red sun T5 tubes instead. And these are extremely red and if you see the cast off by the light against the back wall, the light is uh, actually closer to purple than white. In a T5 fixture with multiple tubes, it allows us to use red or purple or pink bulbs and this will really make the colored plants pop in a planted tank setup. For a budget build on especially shallower tanks, my default light of choice is actually an IKEA desk lamp. 
it costs about $12 and you can outfit it with a high wattage CFL bulb or these days instead I use a screw in LED light bulb it produces quite a bit of light and you can grow pretty much any plant as long as your tank is shorter than 20 inches to recap the video when choosing a light fixture decide on your power level and if you want more flexibility you can get a fixture with higher power but make sure that it is adjustable and choose a fixture that uh, gives good spread if you want flexibility so that if you have a very uh, technical hardscape all areas of the tank can still be reached by far the most important aspect of a fixture is the light spectrum produced and i think that even if the light spectrum grows your plants well but it looks ugly one will not be happy with it i will be talking more specifically on spectrum for my next video but as a general guide try to see the light in person if you can if not try to get look at many pictures of people using that light fixture before you think about buying it with that this is the end of my video thanks for watching guys